I'd like you to think about for a moment how ISTAS 13, wearable computers in everyday life, is linked to big data. Keith Miller and I write about this in our editorial. We ask you to consider if every individual in the more developed countries was wearing one of these life-logging devices, recording 24 times 7 what they saw around them, how much data would actually be flowing in and out of various networks and data storage centres. You can start to imagine that our current needs of storage will change dramatically as we embark on a journey to lifelog absolutely everything around us. Memoto has recently launched a device uh, that will also lifelog and they are speaking out ISTAS 13. But can you imagine the possibilities of behavioural tracking and monitoring using big data analytics? If everything I did was captured on a data storage device, if everything I saw, my point of eye, was recorded, what are some of the big data concerns that you might have? Some of these have to do with privacy. Others pertain to security. Others pertain to how this data might be used for collective awareness or for ensuring that you turn up to work at the right time. I know that the quantified self movement, for example, is pushing the ideal of quantifying different aspects of your life to reach a work-life balance. All of us are busier and busier each day, but by quantifying how much we sleep, how much we walk, whether our temperature is accurate and correct for the day, and a whole myriad of other physiological characteristics like our heart rate and pulse rate, we can determine our level of well-being. Is there a potential for this type of big data, imagine now streams of data coming out from every individual, to be harnessed not only by service providers, but by actually other industries such as the insurance industry? Will it become possible perhaps that one day I might not have a life insurance policy because I'm just not eligible? I've spent most of my time behind a computer, typing and little time with my family exercising outside. These are just some of the issues that we may ponder. I want to stress that this special issue of IEEE Computer neither has a dystopian view nor a utopian view. Keith Miller and I have tried to go into what we call a via media, a centrality view. What are the risks? What are the potential consequences? What happens if I start to benchmark myself and my day against, you know, normal, everyday, quantified self benchmarks. What if I don't meet those benchmarks? May I become more distressed as a consumer of these life logging products and quantified self movement products because I'm not aligned with my peer or the rest of my group at my age level? These are some of the questions we need to ask ourselves. Do we really need new technologies to monitor everything we do and to alert us of the fact that we've gone over time. My suggestion would be, if we get to that point, then we've probably gone too far. I hope that you can see the potential harms and the potential benefits of big data. We sure can. What we're trying to do is come to some agreement uh, over some of the potential frameworks that might be applicable in this new big data environment. We speak of the capacity to do Uber analytics in an ubervalence society, which means that everything is quantified. But what about qualifying life? Don't we all want our life to be improved in other ways that are not just measurable? I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you for your time.